Hello, friends. I hope you're out wandering through nature, exploring the natural world around you. Do you enjoy writing about your wanderings? Nature journaling is an awesome, fun way to remember all the adventures you have taken and how you felt during those journeys. If you're looking for some beautiful journals to keep track of all your wanderings, I have several available on Amazon, including some guided journals for children. Start your journey in journaling by clicking on the link in the show notes. Keep exploring the nature around you and keep journaling all your wanderings. Hello, fellow nature lovers. This is Paul, and of course, this is the Nature Wander Podcast. Good to have you with me today exploring nature in the wilds of my own backyard today. Yeah, um, spring cleaning time. Spring cleaning is for the birds, and in my book, that's totally true, because I'm actually outside doing my spring cleaning. I'll go inside in probably a couple weeks and help my wife out with the spring cleaning indoors, but right now I am outdoors doing spring cleaning for the birds. So next time you say, yeah, spring clean is for the birds. It is, because, you know, I'm out here cleaning out nest boxes. Yeah, I've got 28 bluebird nest boxes on my property. And every spring I come out and I clean those nest boxes out. I get out anything that's been living in there all winter long like mice. Yeah, I usually leave them. I know some people close their nest boxes off for the winter, but you know, the mice need a warm place to stay for the winter as well. And now that it's warmed up, the mice can find somewhere else to live. So anyhow, I'm out here cleaning out nest boxes. That's one of the things I do for my spring cleaning routine for the birds. And I'm actually up to one of my nest boxes. I Go up and oh, this one has a little bit. It looks like last year's nest. So I come along. I've got my bucket with my. I've got a stick. I've got a hammer and some extra spare nails, and I've got some shingles with me. I'm gonna knock out all this stuff from last year. It looks like last year's nest. Part of it. Uh, if I have a nice clean nest in there, I'll leave it. But this one has an old nest. It's not very clean and it's not in good shape. So I'm going to pull that out and check on the roof. The roof shingles look good and the nail is good. Um, I have nails on the side that hold the door closed for me. And then I just pull the nail out when I want to check the nest boxes, see who's nesting on them. So sometimes during the year, those come loose and they fall and I don't know where they are. And so what I have to do is I want to keep them closed right away. So I grab a dead reed and I'll stick it in that hole. And then this time of year in the spring, I'll come around and I'll replace those sticks that I put in there. And I'll put a fresh nail in so that the birds have a nice new home. Okay, so this one's looking good. It is leaning a bit, which I don't like. Ground gets soft around it, so I'm going to straighten it out. Probably come back later, put a little more dirt in there, but just pounding the ground around it does help. So that one's in good shape. Okay, so on to the next one. And let's see, this one here... And you're probably thinking, wow, that was quick. Oh, this has a mouse nest in, so I have to get that out. Got to be careful. Earlier in, in the, um, my front boxes, I cleaned them out a couple of days ago. Like I said, 28 boxes. I take my time. I usually split it between two days. And I did the front boxes the other day, and now I'm doing the back boxes. And yesterday or the other day, I was cleaning out one of the boxes. I opened it up and it was just packed full 
of mouse nest. Uh, lots of plant material, other material, and um, it looked like some fur was in there. Some feathers, probably left over from the tree swallows that were in there last year. But yeah, you know, the mice had quite a nest in there, and I took my stick, I poked it. I'm always careful, always, because I never know if there's still a mouse in there. And sure enough, two mice come jumping out. So I jumped right out. Uh, I was staying off to the side because I learned my lesson last year. Last year I was poking away and I pulled a nest box out and the darn mouse that was in there ran right up my arm, jumped off my shoulder, scared the living daylights out of me. So I'm really cautious now. So if you're doing this, make sure you do that. Make sure you are off to the side when you're cleaning it out. No mice in this, thank goodness. Uh, now I know a lot of people will actually close up their boxes for the year. They don't want the mice getting in there uh, during the winter, but I feel they need a nice warm place to stay, so that's why I let them stay in there during the winter. And then I ev evict them in the spring because this is the time that the birds are starting to come back. The bluebirds, the males usually come back in February. And so I like to get out here usually by February. I'm a little late this year, so it's March now that I'm finally getting around to doing this early March. And um, evicting the mice so that the birds can start checking them out. I haven't seen any bluebirds on the property yet, but they'll be back soon. And the males come back, check out, see where they want to nest, hopefully in my boxes. They do every year. I usually get at least two nesting pair. The one year I had re-nesting pair that came in and nested in my boxes so and they re-nested a couple of them re-nested twice so I got two nestings out of um, a couple of the pair so it's kind of nice so they will come in check them out decide what boxes they want and then they'll start collecting nest material and start building the nest and then the females will come back a little later and it's like they're all set they've got their nests so a lot of different birds will use nest boxes. So if you're wondering, you know, well, maybe I want to put nest boxes in my yard, do it. I highly recommend it. It really helps the birds out. Uh, populations of a lot of birds have dropped tremendously. And so it's good to give them new nesting places so that the populations can start increasing. And so I have bluebird boxes on. And I said I have 28, but I usually only get three of them at the most occupied by bluebirds. But I get a lot of them occupied by tree swallows, which I think are kind of awesome birds. I do get some wrens in them as well. I believe they're house wrens. haven't been able to catch them to find out what type of wren, but I usually hear the house wrens on my property. And when I do the bird banding, um, I usually catch just house wrens. So I'm pretty sure they're house runs. I usually get one or two house run nests in my boxes. And every year I usually get a black cap chickadee nesting in my front box, the one closest to the road. And I think it's because they like to nest in the woods. And even though my boxes are in a nice straight row along my property line, uh, in the front, I mean, they're all in the field, but in the front, there's so much honeysuckle. I think they feel like they're in the woods. I feel that they probably um, think they have enough protection there. So that's fine. Uh, I, I love it when they're in there. But um, this year I did build some tube nest boxes for black capped chickadees. And I'll leave the link for the plans in the show notes so if you want to build some chickadee nest boxes do that but those are going to end up in the woods i'm going to be putting those deep in the woods that i have on my property just so that they're in the right habitat they don't like being in open fields they will nest in open fields like i said i get them every year um, i've got some loose nails here on this nest box i don't want the door coming loose so i'm going to Get those pounded in. Okay, this one's in good shape, nice and cleaned out. 
Um, I'm going to come back to this one a little bit later. Like I said, it was packed full of a mouse nest. And I don't like when I take it out and the whole bottom is kind of moist and you can smell the urine smell. Yeah, so I just don't want that for the birds. I didn't bring my spray along. I will come around with some vinegar. Uh, vinegar and water. Sometimes I'll do straight vinegar. Um, this one I'll probably just call it straight vinegar. And I put it in a spray bottle and I spray it in the nest box. It kills the bacteria, the germs, and that way the birds, when they get back, they have a nice, clean, wonderful place to come back to. Okay, I'm going to head on to the next boxes. Um, the boxes, I got sidetracked there, I was telling you that you're probably wondering how I got to this box so fast. Well, I pair my boxes up. When you're doing nest boxes on your property, if you have the room to do so, pair them up. So you'll put two of them. My nest boxes are next to each other, but not back to back, which you can do. I've seen that done where you do them back to back. But mine are actually um, each on their own pole. But they are approximately oh, eight feet apart, eight or ten feet apart. And then from each pair is about 30 feet. And maybe even more than that. Yeah, probably more than that, about 50 feet. So about 50 feet between each pair. You want to pair them up like this because bluebirds, they don't like company next to them, at least not their own species. Tree swallows are the same way. Now, if I didn't pair mine, every single one of them would be filled with tree swallows. I'll guarantee it. And what would happen is, when the bluebirds come back, they won't have a place to, to stay. Uh, the tree swallows might evict them. But tree swallows don't like nesting next to each other, and bluebirds don't like nesting next to each other. So when the tree swallows start taking over the nest boxes, they'll take over one, and they'll guard the other one. They'll keep other tree swallows from going into the one in the pair. So that way it leaves every other nest box open. And who gets those? The bluebirds. They don't mind nesting next to a tree swallow. They just don't want their own kind next to them. So that's why I pair my boxes up. So I have two of them, like, I don't know, eight, ten feet apart. And then the each pair are about 30 to 50 feet in between them. So that's how I pair mine. So I'm at the next pair. And, oh, this nail's a little bit short. I may replace that. Okay, this one's pretty clean. Yeah, this one doesn't have much in it. So, looks good. I'm going to put the nail back. The Okay, it looks like it's in good shape. The roof is fine. Looks like I may have to redo my numbers this year, though. I put numbers on my nest boxes. The reason that I do that is to keep track of them. Because I do nest watch every year. Uh, I did an episode, I think it was last year, uh, in the spring about nest watch. If you're interested, you know, check out nest watch. It's a great program to keep track of what birds are nesting on your property. And I do it every year. And that's why I number my boxes. Do you have to number boxes? No. But if you're doing nest box or nest watch, it does come in handy. Okay, that one looks clean, so we're gonna head on to the next bunch. So this is the first part of my spring cleaning routine for the birds. My second part is something that I do all summer long, every other month or every month, sorry. Um, during the winter time, I am a slacker. But the reason is because it's very difficult to do in the winter. Um, I will sometimes, they're really getting messy, I will do it. What I'm talking about is cleaning out bird feeders. So if you feed the birds, if you have bird feeders that you hang out, clean them. Okay, now you take them, you empty all the seed out, this is the way I do it. I empty all the seed out of it. And if there's any wet, 
seed on the bottom sometimes you know how if you get a storm and it rains and the water gets inside the feeder and it doesn't drain out properly maybe the drainage holes are plugged what happens is that seed sits there and gets mildewed and it basically rots which is not good for the birds so you want to just get rid of that seed dump it on the ground throw it out bury it whatever you want to do uh, but don't leave it in the feeder because it'll get the birds sick birds are very sensitive canary in the coal mine i've mentioned that in episodes before when we were talking about birds they're very sensitive to environmental um, pollutants so they can get sick very easily from these contaminants even with their food so what you should do is make sure and they recommend the experts recommend at least once a month cleaning your bird feeders now some some sites that i have seen not very good ones in my opinion but some websites that i have seen that talk about cleaning out bird feeders will say do a one part bleach to 10 parts water whenever i hear the word bleach i shudder it's one of the most environmentally unfriendly chemicals out there i don't use bleach i i won't even have it in my house so bleach it, crows are watching me clean up the boxes um no oh, they're up in the trees you can see them over there awesome but i have the um bleach is not good i use vinegar so i will empty the food the good food out of the feeder i'll take out any you know dirt that's in the bottom any you know bad seed i'll get that out scrape that out and then i will rinse it out with some um, like my hose in the summertime get some pressure behind that water that usually loosens everything up if there's still a lot in there i scrub it with a scrubby i have a special scrubby i use um, only for that and i'll scrub the inside of the feeder out and then i rinse it out again and i usually will take some um, vinegar solution and i'll put it on my scrubby and i'll scrub it out again with the vinegar and then i rinse it thoroughly and dump it now i've had people tell me they use the bleach and they just make sure they rinse it and rinse it i'm sorry it's just where's that bleach going it's going into the ground even if you do rinse the feeder it's maybe you get it all out doesn't harm the birds but it's harming the environment so please don't use bleach use vinegar uh, there's other solutions that you can use too that are environmentally friendly but i have found vinegar works great so rinse it out really well don't put seed in again not till it's dry yeah turn it upside down let it dry for a couple hours in the sun um, I, I say do it in the sun because if it's a sunny day the sun is actually going to kill a lot of the bacteria and such on the feeder as well so sunlight is great for sterilizing things so get out uh, let it sit in the sun let it dry let it get nice and dry and then after it's nice and dry then you can fill it with some nice fresh seed or maybe if the seed that you dumped out was still good put that in there and then hang it again in the birds are happy as could be uh, now in the winter time if you want to do it every month you know i feel the cold kind of prevents it anyhow any bacteria from growing it's usually in the summertime when you have the problems but i usually let mine go for the winter mostly because it's a pain in the neck to clean them in the winter time i like using my hose and doing everything outside but if you have a slop sink that you don't mind using and you want to clean them do everything inside you know you can stay warm in there and let everything dry inside but like i said i usually wait till summer and that's when i get to the um once a month but i do a thorough job in the spring so it's part of my spring cleaning ritual uh, when i'm done with the cleaning up the nest boxes here i'll probably clean my feeders out and like i said i'll take them all down well I shouldn't say that i don't take them all down not at the same time i actually vary them 
So I've got um, a couple of seed feeders up, I have a peanut feeder, and I have a couple of suet feeders. So I try to leave some food up for the birds while I take the other feeders down, and then I'll clean some of my feeders, I'll get them nice and dry, refill them, hang those, and I'll take the others down. So it's usually a two-day job for me. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do it today because it's not very sunny, it's very cloudy today, overcast. But that's the way I do it, you know, alter it because you want to, you know, keep the birds there. If you take them down for a couple of days, all of them, you're going to have to get your birds back, entice them back again. So that's my spring cleaning routine. Nest boxes, bird feeders, uh, keeps your birds healthy. And I'm up to my last pair here. This one has just a little bit in it. Yeah, it's nice and clean. Roof looks good. The nail's good. Um, this one's nice and straight. Uh, next one here. Check this one out. Uh, that door is a little loose. Next year, I'm probably going to have to replace the door on that one. Um, yeah, the roof is missing off this. I put shingles, asphalt shingles on the top. It just helps to make them last longer, and it keeps the water out of them. But this one, the shingle is totally gone, and I don't even see it. I'll have to walk around in the field, see if I can locate it. Don't want that sitting out here, polluting the environment. Um, winds, we get so much wind up here on the hill. But it probably carried the roof right off, and I had no idea. And I don't have an extra shingle with me, so... I'm going to have to take care of this roof, so mental note for this one. Um, this is one that didn't have a nail in it, so I'll have to replace it with a nail. So that one is all set. Um, so that's the last of my boxes. I'm going to head back up to the house, um, probably wait for a sunny day to do the bird feeders. Um, something else I want to mention when I get up to the house wash your hands thoroughly. You've just been sticking them in birdhouses. You've been cleaning out mouse nests sometimes. You know, whatever you're doing with cleaning out these boxes and all, you want to make sure that you keep yourself safe too. Not just the birds, but yourself. So make sure you wash your hands real well. Um, If you're out there and you have a lot of boxes like me, um, I didn't do it this time. Sometimes I'll actually carry hand sanitizer with me, a little jar of hand sanitizer, just so I can sterilize my hands. Uh, if I get into a messy box and I get some of the droppings on my hands, don't do this on a windy day either. And the reason I say that is I did it once on a windy day, and I'm cleaning out one of the nest boxes. And as I clean it. Oh, it's going to watch my step here. I've got some fox scat in the middle of my trail. Um, as I was cleaning out the nest box, it's like the wind. I suddenly got a gust, and I got all this. Uh, luckily, it wasn't a mouse nest. It was just a, um old bird nest from last year. And all of that just flew up into the air and all over me, all into my face. And it's like, oh, man, I don't want to breathe this stuff in. But, yeah, so don't do it on a windy day. Do it on a nice calm day so that that doesn't happen to you. Uh, same thing with the bird feeders, you know. Wash your hands afterwards, you know, sterilize everything. Make sure you stay healthy as well. So um, another thing I want to talk about with bird feeders I know last year there were were a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of stories going around, a lot of uh, stuff on the internet, on social media about, oh, stop feeding the birds. I'm like, what? (laughs) What do you mean stop feeding the birds? Um, There were some illnesses going on with the birds, and birds were really going to say, I don't even remember what it was. Um, It it was similar to the bird flu. It may have actually been the bird flu that they're talking about. Uh, And it got really bad. It was a really bad year for it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure it was the bird flu last year. 
but it was a really bad year for it, and um, the birds were getting sick by being near each other. Now remember that when you have a bird feeder, you're basically inviting all these birds in to eat from your bird feeders, and they congregate. So you get a lot of birds of different species at your bird feeders, all hanging out next to each other, near each other, and when they do that, well, they're spreading disease. Um, one of the reasons I am always, you know, trying every summer to keep my bird feeders clean is these diseases that get spread easily from close contact between birds. House finch conjunctivitis. It's a, a disease that house finch get. And what it does is their eyes get all watery and gunked up, if you want to use that technical term. Uh, they, you know, and eventually they get so crusted, the eyes get so crusted that they can't open them. And they're essentially blind then. You know, so they can't find food. They can't, you know, keep away from danger, and it will kill them. So this house finch conjunctivitis is a pretty nasty thing, and they found that it is mostly being spread through dirty feeders, congregating, you know, the birds congregating with each other. Um, another, uh, well, back to, before I go on to another subject, um, with this, with the birds congregating, um, last year they said stop feeding because you don't want the birds to congregate. They're going to spread bird flu much quicker. Well, check your local wildlife um, website. If they don't have any information, call them. Talk to them. I know I checked ours, um, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the DEC, and they actually had a map of where this was prevalent, the bird flu. And fortunately, it wasn't in my area, in my county. So my county was pretty clear of it. Um, no reports at all. It was very prevalent up north of me in the counties north of me. So I kept an eye on that. I did not take my bird feeders down, uh, but I did keep an eye on it. And if it did start moving into my area, I would have taken my feeders down and stopped feeding for a short period of time. Not forever, no. As soon as the bird flu went away, I would have started feeding again. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with my spring cleaning uh, is actually something that I do all year long again, or I should say all summer long, um, because I live up in the northern climates here in western New York, and I don't put my hummingbird feeders up in the winter time. It's a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, hummingbirds we get only in the summertime here, the ruby-throated hummingbird. So in the winter time, I take my feeders down. But during the summer, every year when I did rehab, I would get wildlife rehabilitation. Uh, I'm licensed, I used to be a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. And back when I did rehabilitation, every single year I would get calls about the um, hummingbirds that were acting funny around people's feeders. And they were acting like they were drunk or dizzy or weak or, you know, just didn't seem right. And what was going on is they were getting bad food. The food is, I mean, you can mix your own, you can get mixes. I usually just do a natural sugar, um, unbleached natural sugar, and I dissolve that in water. No food coloring. And then I put that in the hummingbird feeders. And the hummingbirds love it, and it's healthier for them than any of these food-colored. You don't want that in the feeders. So 
that's what I would do, but I would change it. If your feeders are in the sun, change them more often. If they're not, um, make sure that, you know, you change them at least once a week. So I don't put a lot in my feeders, my hummingbird feeders. I don't fill them all the way up to the top because I, I don't get a lot of hummingbirds. I usually see, and yeah, I don't know how many, but usually I'll see two at a time. I'm sure I'm getting more than just two here. Uh, but I have no idea. I just keep an eye on it and I will refill them as soon as they start to get a little bit empty. That way I don't have to worry about it sitting out in the sun for too long. And then once a week it's a good idea just to empty them, clean them out with soap and water, um, rinse them out very thoroughly, and then you can refill them again. But you don't want those hummingbird feeders to get dirty uh, can make the hummingbirds sick. And after you fill the feeders, after you're, you know, done cleaning your feeders, uh, once again, I can't stress this enough, take care of yourself as well. So make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly. So if that's about all I want to talk about with my spring cleaning. Uh, I encourage you to do the same. Get out there, clean out your nest boxes, clean out your feeders, and the birds will appreciate it. I know they will. So I hope you enjoyed learning about my spring cleaning routine. If you enjoyed the podcast, rate and review, share it with friends. Uh, trying to get the numbers up this year. That's my goal for this year. I just want to get more people educated about nature. That's all I've ever wanted to do is just get more and more people educated about nature. So help me do that by sharing the podcast, reading and reviewing the podcast, letting more people know about it. Um, if you want to support the mission of the Nature Wander, of spreading nature to more and more people. Oh, the geese are coming back from the south. Got two Canadian geese. They're headed right for my pond. Are they going to land or are they going to go? Nope, they're turning. They're going on to the neighbor's pond. Um, but if you want to support the podcast, please go to my Ko-Fi page. The links are in the show notes. And there's also a nature challenge easy challenge. You can do it. Less than 10 hours a week, uh, 500 hours a year. Get out and explore nature. Can you do it? You don't have to start on the first of the year. You can start any time and just go for uh, 12 months for a complete year and spend 500 hours each year out of nature. I'm going to give you a little log that you can track it on an Excel sheet or numbers if you use Macintosh. So uh, those are downloadable. There's um, lots of information about it. Go to the link that I will leave in the show notes and see if you can take the challenge. Thanks for joining me, and above all, keep exploring the nature around you. Did you know that plastic is made with oil, a fossil fuel that pollutes the environment? And did you know that only about 15% of all plastic is recycled into new products? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could live our lives without plastic so that we could stop harming the planet? Well, there's a company that wants to help you do just that. Life Without Plastic sells products that will reduce or eliminate your dependence on plastic. They have a large selection from toothbrushes to food storage containers to drinking straws, all plastic-free. And it's reasonably priced. So what are you waiting for? Check out all these great plastic-free products and help save the planet. Just click on the link in the show notes to find out more and to start your journey to being plastic-free.